Sasha, are you ready? Amen. All right, so in our first presentation, we focus on the heart. Amen? Amen. We talk a lot about the heart of the, uh, the, heart of the, of, 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 of the church, right? And if the heart is blocked, blood can't get all the way around. Amen? Amen. And that's just blood is the, is, the, is, the, is, the, is the truth, right? If the heart is blocked, the truth won't get to go all around the body. So we must remedy the situation. Amen? Amen? And one of the reasons that man came up with is to put a stent in the heart to keep it, you know, to keep the valve open and all that. Now, medically, um, sorry, what does that mean for us? What is a stent? A stent would be a minister that's standing in the gap, yeah. ensuring that information is flowing. Amen. All right? So, so we need to do some heart surgery. Amen. And this is what the Lord is calling us to do. We need to do some heart surgery because our blood is, is the truth. And if the truth is not flowing, there is no religious liberty. Amen. Right? The blood doesn't have the liberty to go where it wants because there is a blockage in the way. All right? And so in this presentation, we're going to talk about religious liberty. We're going to learn what it means to have religious liberty. In, in, man, it's really nice when you see it. In its true understanding, not just we know that is to be free, right? Because liberty is to be free. Mm -hmm. But how do we gain that freedom? It's really important. That freedom comes through one way. I am the way, the truth, and the life. That freedom only comes through Christ. If you don't have Christ, religious liberty is not a thing for you. All right? So let us go now. Let us reread one of the statements from the GC. Reaffirmation statement. They said the Seventh-day Adventist Church, in its consultation with the Health Ministries and Public Affairs and Religious Liberty Department of the General Conference, is what? Well, there is no change in their minds, right? It's, well, I mean, they could change, but they're saying, as of now, we are convinced that vaccination programs are generally that are generally being carried out are important for the safety and health of our members and the community at large. Therefore, claims of religious liberty are not used appropriately in objecting to what? Well, who else are you going to use claims of liber religious liberty against? Yeah, yeah. If not the government, then who? Yeah, no, one no one else can restrict your liberty exactly. all right, to, to worship. So... Are employer programs designed to protect the health and safety of their communities? With that in mind, that's the mindset of the church. With that in mind, let us go into religious liberty. First, what is religion? Right? What does the Bible tell us is religion? The Bible says, pure religion and undefiled before God and, of the, and the Father is this. Before who and the Father? God. Who is God then? Okay. Praise God. Here's a text you could use to show men that Christ is God. Because it says God and the Father. Who's the Father? God. So then who's God? Amen? Let's continue. Is this. To visit the fatherless and widows in their what? This is why Christ came the time he came. Christ came in the time of the worst period in earth's history. To visit the fatherless and the widows in their affliction. Are we following? Amen. And to keep himself what? Unspotted. Unspotted from the world. Pure religion is to keep yourself what? Unspotted. unspotted from the world. Who's the only person that ever kept themselves unspotted from the world? Then if you're not part of that religion, 
you don't have a pure religion. All right? So already, every other Confucianism, all that, all that is gone, right? Even um, Islam, gone. All we have now is just Christianity and the major and the multitudes of denominations within Christianity who claim to be following Christ. But pure religion keeps itself unspotted from the world. There is a difference. All right? Our religion, our church, the, the Christian religion is no longer pure because we are no longer unspotted from the world. And as we saw in the last presentation, our church not, is not either. So what does the Lord have to do? Pull out a people who's going to keep themselves unspotted from the world. Amen? So, Hebrews, Christ was in all points tempted, but yet without what? There is your unspotted, right? There is a man. So if you're not in a religion that belongs to Christ, you're not in a pure religion. Amen. Liberty. What is liberty? The Spirit of the Lord is upon, uh, upon me because he hath what? Appointed. Anointed me to preach to the poor. Preach he had the, gospel the gospel to the poor. Amen. He had sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captive, to, and recovering the sight of the blind, to set at liberty them that are what? Bruised. Bruised. Okay. So only the people of a pure religion could set people free. Are we following? Because that's what it says. Christ, the pure religion, was what? Anointed to set people free. If you're not part of that group, you can't set people free. Amen? Let us continue. To set at liberty. This is from the 1828 dictionary. This one line. It says, to set at liberty... To deliver from confinement, to release from what? Restraint. restraint. All right? So those that are bruised have a restraint upon them. Are we following? Mm -hmm. To be bruised is to have a restraint placed upon you. Right? It's to have your liberty restrained. Amen? Amen. What were the conditions when these words were spoken? What were the conditions when Christ spoke the words, the Lord has anointed me? Isaiah 5 and verse 6. From the sole of the head, of, let's read verse 6. From the sole of the foot, even to the head, there is no soundness in it, but wounds and what? Bruises. And restraints. Amen? Amen? Wounds and bruises and putrefying sores. That was the condition of the church when Christ came. The whole head was sick. And we saw this morning that the whole head is sick. Amen? Amen. Jeremiah 30 and verse 12. For thus saith the Lord, thy bruise is what? incurable and thy wound is grievous there is none to plead thy cause that was the condition of the jewish church before christ came that thou mayest be bound up thou hast no healing what medicines what did what did um, ezekiel tell us is medicine the, the herbs the leaves herbs. right there was no vegetables for them to eat it says all thy lovers have forgotten thee they seek thee not, for I have wounded thee with the wound of an enemy, with the chastisement of a cruel one, for the multitude of thine iniquity. Why? Because thy sins were increased. Why criest thou for thine affliction? Thy sorrow is incurable for the multitude of thine iniquity, because thy sins were increased. Two times. The Lord does not repeat things that are of no great consequence. I have done these things unto you. To be bruised is to be increased with sin. Sin bruises the church. Sin restrains the church. Sin takes away the liberty of the church. Sin takes away the liberty of human beings. Are we following? To not have liberty is to be in sin. That's really as simple as that. So the Lord sent a man to walk this earth to show us how to live free, unspotted from the world. That's what makes the pure religion. God is about to bring up back this pure religion. That's why he's correcting our diet, our Sabbath keeping. All these things he's trying to correct among us and to bring us in unity is so that this pure religion can exist at the end of the world. And brethren, we will be free. Yet, we'll be persecuted. We won't be free in that sense. Are we following? 
Because some of us are going to be put in prison. We're going to be on the run. And in that condition, we're free. Are we following? Persecution frees the church. Let us continue. John 8, 34. Jesus answered unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto them, Whosoever committed sin is a what? And that word servant is slave. All right? You're a slave to sin. No liberty means there is sin. Romans 16, 20. And the grace of God, sorry, and the God of peace shall what? Bruise Satan where? So where is where do, where are people bruised? Under the feet. All right? Youth instructor. Uh, June 28, Sister White says, When Christ died on the cross, Satan triumphed, but his triumph was short. The prophecy made in Eden was what? Fulfilled. I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. It shall what? Restrain the head, right? Uh, and thou shalt what? Restrain his heel. Which one is more detrimental? The head. So Satan is going to get his head cut off, right? Whereas, yeah, he's going to prick us in the feet, but we're going to keep going even though our feet is bleeding. Now we following? And then why it says they saw blood on the wall, right? You're going to keep going even though your foot is bleeding, all right? Let's continue. Daniel 8, 13. Then I heard one saint speaking, and another saint said unto that certain saint which spake, How long shall be the vision concerning the what? Daily and the transgression of desolation to give both the sanctuary and the host to be what? No, no. What are we teaching? To be what? To be bruised. The bruising of the church was done by the daily and the transgression of desolation. So when Christ comes, he's coming to deal with the daily and the transgression of desolation. Amen? At his first coming, who did he deal with? Come on. Ellen White says it was fulfilled at the cross. He bruised Satan's head at the cross. Who did Christ deal with based on Daniel 8.13? Paganism. Paganism. The daily. Amen? He dealt with the daily. Right? He set free the people from, the, from paganism, from pagan religions. Amen? They had liberty to worship God however they choose once Christ came and died on the cross. Amen? He did that first work. Which is the only work left then? Come on, it's two powers that bruise the crap. Two powers bruise the heel. Paganism and Christ dealt with paganism on the cross. Isn't that what Ellen White said? On the cross, it was fulfilled, Genesis 3.15. But Satan took another guard. So Christ has to come and again fulfill Genesis 3.15. Amen? Okay. So paganism and papalism is what takes our liberty. That's really what. It's what takes our liberty. All right? And now you can take that understanding through prophecy and see how they work. Amen? Amen. You only need a little thing, right? And just take that through prophecy and see how the papacy works. And you say, oh, so that's how they take liberty. Oh, they're going to join with the government. Oh, man. But what is the administration doing? They're taking away the liberty of the people. Don't come here with that religious liberty stuff. Take that to the law. Right? That's what they're saying. Let us continue. But the court which is without the temple leave out, and measure it not, for it is given unto the Gentiles, and the holy city they shall tread on the foot, what? 1260 years. Amen? For 1260 years, the church had its liberty taken away. All right? 2 Corinthians. Where the, now, now the Lord is that spirit. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there is what? So Ellen White in 90, I don't have the quote here, she says what? She says, we are living in the time of the end. Mm -hmm. The fast fulfilling signs are what? It's showing that the, 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 the end is near at hand. Yeah. Right? Something to that effect. And then she says, they are, um, the spirit of God is being gradually withdrawn. So as the spirit of God has been withdrawn, what is happening to men? They are going into bondage. Slowly and slowly and slowly until they'll, be, they'll find themselves bound under the Catholic Church at the Sunday Law. In 1989, once Reagan made this alliance, America began to be bounded. 
All right? And what are they, what are they attacking? The one document that gives you freedom. The Constitution of the United States. Right? So what the Adventist Church is doing is in keeping with the fulfillment of prophecy. Because they joined, they, they took up spiritual formation at 9-11. And so the only thing they could do after that is bound men. Bind them to man-made doctrines. Bind them to man-made creeds. Now let's continue. Yes. They think they're doing right. Acts chapter 10, it says how that God anointed Jesus Christ with the Holy Ghost and with power, who went about doing what? Good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for who was with him? God. To have liberty is to have God with you. That's liberty. Not the freedom to move around. Not the freedom to teach when you want, how you want. It's to have God with you. Pure religion is the people who are unspotted from the world and has God with them. We must make sure that we have God with us. That's our liberty. Are we following? Brethren, that is a thought that we have to have in our heart for the rest of our lives because persecution will come and they will take our liberty. But they can't take our liberty. Fear not him who could destroy the body, but fear him who could destroy both body and soul. All right? True liberty is God with you. True liberty and God with you means you have the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Because these three are what? One. And what did Christ pray for you to be? That they shall be God. Because I was talking about it the other day, I was like, man, that's nice. Christ is praying that we are like God. And the Bible says, and at that time, one who is like God will stand up. I want you to ask, that's us if we're faithful. We must stand up before Christ, Michael, stand up. Michael must stand up in you. And you must demonstrate to the world that Michael stood up in you. And then Christ can come. Then Michael can stand up. Daniel 12.1 has an application at the Sunday law. To where God, Michael will stand up. And if we're faithful, brethren, that's us. We will stand up. We will stand up and show people we are one with God. God is in us. Are we following? Man, it's, it's going to be glorious. I want us to understand it. It's going to be glorious, but at the same time, it's going to be miserable. It's going to be miserable. The persecution is going to be ten times what it was in the 1260s. But if God is with us, who can be against us? We must, we must nail these promises in our mind. We must nail these thoughts because it's thoughts that's going to get us through these things. And these thoughts must be etched in the mind that to be free is to have God with you. If you have any other thought, it won't work. To be free is to have God with you because they'll say things. And if you let that thought remove God's thought, you're in trouble. Are we following? Amen. So free, true liberty is to have God with you. So religious liberty, when they reject, when the Adventist church rejects these people, religious liberty claim, they're showing that they don't have God with them. It's terrible, right? Because they don't understand religious liberty. And on that, they put out a whole statement showing that they're not in agreement with God. That's why they can't, they can't, they can't um, agree when you come for religious liberty. They can't agree because they're not in agreement with God. Are we following? Mm -hmm. Let's continue. God have mercy on the good people who sit in the pews every Sabbath mm -hmm. listening to that garbage. Mm -hmm. All right? Let's continue. Bible says, when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were aware. They were one. Isn't that what it says? They were one. These three are one. And they were one. Which means on Pentecost, the Father, the Son, and the Spirit were together. They were together. Because His people were together. Amen? 
And what happened in verse 4? And they were filled with the Holy Ghost. They were given liberty to go and do what they want. And Peter says, if it's, um, we ought to obey what? God rather than? Because Peter understood that God was with him. What was the promise? Lo, I will be with you always, even unto the end of the world. Peter understood that God was with him. Amen? We must understand that God is with us. From the fourth plague onwards, I mean, it's going to test us. But from now, we should believe and understand that God is with us. I know our life is rough, but God is with us. Amen? Amen. Let's continue. The one way we know he's with us is by the truths that we receive. Sabbath after Sabbath after Sabbath. Let's continue. Revelation chapter 12. This is what happened to the church who received liberty. And the dragon, when he saw that he was cast out into the earth, he what? He persecuted the woman which brought forth the man-child. Persecution for the truth teaches you that you are free. That's what it tells us. We are free. The Adventist church is bound. This is why they're not persecuted. Dr. Vine is free to an extent because he taught that which was true. And what did they do to him? He's free. I hope he understands that. That makes him free because he used his liberty to stand on the side of truth. Are we following? Let's continue. What does it mean to persecute? Second definition. To afflict, to what? Harass or destroy adherence to a particular creed or system of religious principles or to a mode of worship. God is about to give us a new system of religious principles. And it's going to include a civil government. And what are they going to turn around and do? Afflict and harass us in an effort to destroy it. Let's continue. See Acts 22 on Nero, what Nero did to the Christians. Let's go to Revelation 12 and verse 17. And the dragon was wroth with the woman and went to make what? War, War with the remnant of her seed, which what? Not going to keep. Right? Not those that are going to. This text is yet to be fulfilled, by the way. It says, which keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus. What is war? War is a contest between what? Between what? So there is going to be a civil government. Satan can't make war until God sets up a government in this earth. There can be no war except between nation states. Are we following? No. Brethren, God has been leading us. Ah, the more you go through it, you'll be like, God, thank you for these truths. He has been leading us. He's about to set... America is going to be upset because God is really about to set up a new government. He's really about to set up a nation. The only problem is this nation is not going to have a land. And so God, Christ must come. That's why Christ must come. He's coming in this generation. We have to believe it. He's coming in this generation. He's about to set up his government. And they're going to be mad. And we're going to plead because we have no place to go. Amen. The meek shall inherit. Amen. Let us continue. Next bold. A war is a contest of nations or states. It also implies that such contest is authorized by whom? Come on, by whom? By the monarch or the what? This is why Christ must receive the kingdom. When he receives the kingdom, he's going to authorize the war. He's going to authorize us to go to battle. Because Christ says, if my kingdom were of this world, what would happen? My servants would. But brethren, this kingdom, this world is about to become his kingdom. So what is his servants going to do? He's going to authorize us into battle. And Ellen White, she says it all the time. The banner we carry is the, t um, the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. That's the banner we're going to carry into this war. We are soon to be authorized to go to war. 
Because once Christ set up his government, Satan and his government comes to war. Are we following? Mm -hmm. Let us continue. I pray that we're following. It's really nice when you see these things. And, and it's all, it's been here in the scriptures. God is just now opening up, at least to my mind. Some of you may have already seen it, but God is opening it up to my mind. And I'm just sharing my testimony with you here today. Amen. Amen. Let's go to Daniel chapter 2 and verse 44. Keep in mind. Daniel chapter 2 and verse 44. We still start in religious liberty. It says, And in the days of these kings shall the God of heaven do what? The there is your proof. It's been there all this time. Amen. Which shall never be destroyed, and the kingdom shall what? Not be, Not be left to other people, but it shall break in pieces and consume all these. Amen. There's your war. There's a war right here. The kingdom of Christ is going to destroy these other kingdoms. Amen? Christ is going to authorize this war. Now, let us go to Daniel chapter 7 and verse 26. Remember, it says he wouldn't be left to other people. So who is he leaving it to then? But the judgment shall sit. Now we know when this time is going to be. Amen? Amen. The judgment of the living. That's what this is. Amen. But the judgment shall sit, and they shall take away what? His dominion. To consume and to? That's what Daniel 2 says, right? Christ's kingdom is going to destroy those kingdoms. Keep in mind, Christ already destroyed paganism. So the only other thing that's left to destroy is papalism. This is all about the papacy. Amen? Continuing on. And the kingdom and the dominion and the greatness of the kingdom under the whole heaven shall be given to whom? The people of the saints of the Most High. God is going to give us a kingdom. And it starts here. It starts here. Because it must start in your heart. Amen? It starts here. And they're going to see it. And the Bible says the dragon was wroth and went to make what? War. War with the remnant of the seed, which keep the commandments of God and have the faith of Jesus. Let us continue. Who is this people? The people of the saints. Let's identify the people of the saints. Revelation 19 and verse 5. Remember, the saints are going to receive the kingdom. Amen? Amen? Amen. Amen. Let us identify them. Let us identify them. And, the vo and a voice came out of the throne saying, Praise our God, all ye servants, and ye that what? Amen. It's Matthew 24. Amen? Amen? Because it says, ye his servants. The Bible says, the evil servant shall say in his heart, my Lord delayeth his. But who is that servant whom the Lord shall um, so find when he cometh, doing what? Giving meat in? So this, this chapter is about Matthew 24. Because it says, all ye his servants. Amen? Amen? And then it says, and ye that what? Fear him. Revelation 14. Yeah. Amen? Let's continue. Both small and great. And I heard, as it were, the voice of a great multitude, and, and as the voice of many waters, and as the voice of mighty thundering, saying, Alleluia. Alleluia. For the Lord God omnipotent, what? Amen. He has a kingdom. Amen. Amen? Let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to him, for the marriage of the what? Lamb, Lamb is come, and his wife hath made herself ready, and to her was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen, clean and white, for the fine linen is the what? Righteousness of the saints. Let us continue. And he said unto me, Right, blessed are they which are what? Call to the marriage supper of the Lamb. Do we know of a story where people is called to a marriage? The parable of the ten virgins. So who is the people of the saints that the Lord is going to give? Those who have the experience of the Adventist Amen. people. Amen. That's those who will receive the kingdom in Daniel. That's those who receive liberty. Amen. Liberty. Amen. Because they are of a pure religion. Are we following? Amen. What God did to the Millerites, the parable of the ten virgins, I see it now. If we don't live it on earth, we can't fulfill Revelation 19. Are we following? 
If we don't go through this experience now, Revelation 19 means nothing to us because we won't know what it, what it is to be called to the marriage supper. Are we following? The Millerites, were they called to a marriage supper? Yes. What does Ellen White say about that parable? Has been and what? Will be repeated to the? So will we be called to a marriage supper? Yes, to prepare us for the real marriage supper. The real one. When Christ receives his kingdom. Amen? Let us continue. Let us continue. It says, And I fell at his feet to worship him, and he said unto me, See thou do it not. I am thy fellow servant, and of thy brethren that have the what? Testimony, Testimony of Jesus. Worship what? God. First angel's message. Amen? Amen? Worship God, for the testimony of Jesus is the what? Spirit of the spirit of prophecy. Let us read Revelation 22 and verse 8, and then we'll talk. It says, And I, John, saw these things and heard them, and when I heard, when I had heard and seen, I fell down, to worship him, to worship before the feet of the angel which showed me these things. Then said he unto me, See thou do it not, for I am thy fellow servant, and of thy brethren the what? So all those, all those who are called to the marriage supper are what? Pro they're prophets. Are we following? Yeah. They're prophets. What did the Millerites receive on October 22nd? Just after October 22nd? A prophet. The spirit of prophecy. Because they were called to the wedding. Amen? All right. So let us continue. It says, For I am thy fellow servant of thy brethren the prophet, and of them which keep the sayings of this book. Worship what? God. And he said unto me, Seal not the sayings of this book for what? The time for those prophets is at hand. And what's the very next thing? He that is... Let him be. Just before the close of probation, the Lord is going to raise up his prophets. People who are free to go in and out like Elijah. Free to go in and out like Moses. Free to go in and out before the king like Daniel. True liberty. True religious liberty. This is what God is designing, and the Seventh-day Adventist Church is trying to take it away. That's what COVID was. COVID was designed to take away the liberty in the state and in the church. Praise, bro. when you look back, praise God we took the route we took. Praise God we sat down and we were like, no, what does the Lord want us to do here? Praise God. Brethren, we have to see it. Praise God. Man, we were really led. God was with us. We had liberty. But brethren, we've tasted it. Let's not put it away. Let's not put it away. We've tasted a little bit of that liberty. Amen? God, is a, God wants to raise us up as his prophets at the end of the world. That's what he wants to do. He wants to raise up a group of prophets who have the liberty to go in and out. And we're going to walk into the general conference office and say, Ted Wilson, it will not rain. It will not rain for the next three years. And then we'll walk back out and then they'll search for you. That's what they're trying to prevent. They're trying to, Satan is trying to prevent the fulfillment of prophecy. He cannot. He cannot. These words are sure. It is sure. And brethren, the Lord says, the people who fit this are those that are called to the wedding. Those who accept the first, second, and third angels. It's plain to see. The remnant church of God have a particular message. And they're free. And Satan is mad. And the Bible says he goes to make war with them. And by God's grace, we will smile in the face of that danger. Because with Jesus in the vessel, what does the song say? We can smile at the storm. Amen. Let us continue. Jesus was asleep in the storm. Amen. So the close of probation and verse 12 says, Behold, I come quickly. All right? Freedom comes when we find Christ. 
Those who had believed, early writings 239, those who had believed without a doubt that Jesus would err, then have come to raise the dead and change the living saints and take the kingdom to possess it forever, felt as did the what? Okay. The disciples were disappointed. Amen? But what did they receive on Pentecost? The pouring of the host. Liberty. Yep. Amen? Yep. The Millerites were disappointed. What did they receive? Yep. Liberty. Yep. They re but it's not finished. Yep. That's the difference. It's not finished. Why? Because the papacy is not dead. Christ is coming to bruise the head of the serpent. It's a double-headed serpent. Paganism and papalism. Christ is coming to crush that other head. But we must go to the cross. Because it's at the cross is where that head is crushed. We must freely, with our own liberty, choose the cross. Choose it. That's what the freedom is. Choose to be persecuted. Choose to eat the vegetables. Choose to go and give that message. Choose to call sin by its right name. We must choose this life. It's not choosing us. We have to choose this life. And if you come under the sound of this message, choose ye this day whom you will serve. Amen? Amen. Let us continue. 1 Corinthians 8, 9, it says, But take heed, lest by any means this liberty of yours become a what? The Seventh-day Adventist Church was granted liberty on October 22nd, 1844. And now it has become a stumbling block. And that's why they're canceling Conrad Vine. That's why they're doing what they're doing. They're keeping truth from going forward. And all the members are just sitting there like sitting ducks, waiting for the sun to out, thinking they're going to just get up and say, we're Sabbath keepers. No, no, the letter killeth. The letter killeth. All of them is going to die waiting. They're just going to die. It's terrible what it's about. What, and brethren, we have to sound this warning. And it's going to be harsh. Because just like I'm saying it now, they're going to die. We have to tell them, you are going to die. That side of God you don't want to look at. You only want to see love, 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 love. But that other side, which is love, by the way. That other side, though, it's terrible. As loving as it is, it's terrible. Whom the Lord love, he rebuke and chair. We're about to see rebukes like we've never seen it before on the face of the earth. Because the Lord loves his people. He does. He loves them. And he's going to rebuke them terribly. From the fourth plague on, man, I, we need to know what that plague is. We really do. Because from the fourth plague on, it's about to be terrible. Conrad Vine is only a, a, a picture, an insight into what's coming. This is borrowed light. Conrad Vine is borrowed light as to what's coming upon us, living waters, if we're faithful. Amen? Let's continue. Play Dr. Vine's video. The third point there is more contentious. I put there, if the GC supports future mandates over the consciences of members. That's an important caveat. In the notes, his words are there. Have you seen it? So just follow along what he's saying. I'm going to stop from time to time and talk, but go ahead, Rashad. If the GC in the future supports future mandates over the consciences of mandates, I think we are well within our rights to establish a parachurch movement within the Adventist church. What is a parachurch movement? Go ahead, play. He'll explain. What is that? A parachurch movement would be a gathering, a lay, lay, lay conference of laity. They gather, they maybe incorporate, they return their tithes to that new lay entity that covers the whole of North American division. And then the committee allocates that tithe to conferences who are faithful to scripture. And that way, the conferences that go woke will go broke. Very simple. And the members will determine where that tithe goes based on fidelity to scripture and whether they are willing to contend for the faith that has been passed on to us. This made them mad. I want you to understand. Let's go through this thing slowly. Right. If they do the, if the conference supports the future mandate, we already showed that they supported it. Amen. He says, "I think we are well within our rights to establish a power church movement." And by power church movement, he says the laity, meaning the lay members, can come together and what? Incorporate. Brethren, where have we seen this? 
It's already happened. Mm -hmm. Brethren, that's what we are. Mm -hmm. We need to see it. He is right. That's what we are. You know why we're that? Because in the pandemic, they did support the mandate. Mm -hmm. You don't have to wait for another one. Yeah, exactly. They did do it. So what did the Lord do unbeknownst to us? Because it's unbeknownst to us. We didn't, we, didn't, we didn't choose this. Right? The Lord set up a power church movement. But listen, not only that, that covers the whole North American division. It's right here. Let us continue. It says, that way the conferences that go woke will go broke. I heard one, 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 one guy from Advent, Mes um, the Midnight Cry uh, guy. What's the, what's the name, Emily? You know him. Midnight Cry Media or something yeah, like that. Something. Uh, not his name, but his, his channel. Yeah. Midnight Cry Media yeah. or something like that. Yeah. He said, he don't like this go woke, go broke thing because that seems to impose not buying and selling. That seems to wake up, yeah, because if they don't teach a particular way, we don't give them the tithe. Technically, we're punishing them, buying, and we, we are. But, but that's, that's what I want to say. It is correct. Christ will take away the riches of Laodicea. He will. The conferences that go woke will go broke. What does it mean to go woke? That's what you have to take. What does it mean to go woke? It's to take a communist position. Be spotted with the world. Yes. That what That's what it means. And it's true. Those who go woke will go broke. That's what the Lord is saying. Right? But God is the one that severs. Amen. That's the difference. We're not choosing who go broke. And God is the one that's going to sever. Right? And he says, gather together, collect the tithes. And then he said, send it to conferences. Well, you're just doing the same thing. Yeah. Why send it to conferences? You're just doing the same thing. Yeah. Send it to the places where you are being fed. Yeah. Where there is meat in due season. That's what the storehouse is. The storehouse is the places where there is meat in due season. Because it says, bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse that there may be what? Yeah. Meat in my house. If there is no meat, no need for the tithe to go there. Everyone's following? Tithe is to support places where there is meat so that people can be fed. This is, not, this is not saying just take your tithe from the general conference and give it elsewhere. No. Find out where the meat is. And wherever the meat is, support it. And that's why the famine has to come. The famine has to come. Because when it comes from one place. Yes. It has to come. Right? And so the church got really mad with that statement. Yes, because they, you know, they, they teach that you should only return tithe to the conference. And it's a sin to return tithe outside of the conference. That's what they teach. But Ellen White didn't do that. So where are they getting this teaching from? Where? The Bible says the women gave Christ their substance. The Bible says honor me with your first fruit of your substance. So what did they give to Christ? Tithe and offering. It didn't go to the Sanhedrin. Judas had a bag. Judas had a bag. Okay. So it's easy to... The Adventist church is terrible, man, what they do. It annoys me. It really does. And it should annoy each and every one of us. It should anger us. It should. They're really hurting the people. And we must sigh and cry. My mother is one of those people. Right? Because she's dangling on this. Right? She, she sees truth here. She sees it. Why not make a total commitment to it? Commit to it. This is where the truth is. I don't know if she's going to see this. But she needs it. This is where the truth is. Commit to it. And praise God, Brendan. She does send her tithe here. Okay? So praise God for that. But I want her to commit to this truth and spend time with it and study it and get, because really in truth, the Seventh-day Adventist church is killing our people. They're killing them. They're dying. And we must have this, we, we really must have a mind to save these people. They're dying. 
they're really let us continue shall I continue with the video follow along in the next paragraph i believe i recognize well, i recognize this is uh when you touch the question of tithe this is this this is the, the the sacred nerve in the adventist church but elder wilson did say in his first sermon hold your leaders to account so we're going to hold our leaders to account and if, if more mandates are imposed that override your conscience and the church throws us under the bus once again, I believe that someone somewhere will take the first steps to establish a parachurch movement. And we'll say, with modern banking and modern legal systems, we don't need the conference union division GC hierarchy. We can collect the tithes ourselves and allocate them to the conferences that are faithful to Scripture. What did he just do here? What did he just do here? He bruised the head. He cut it off. He's saying the head is to be cut out in our dealings. Yeah. And they hate that. They hate that. But Kanar told a story a little, a little while ago when he was watching this video. And they cut the head of the snake out. And hours later, what did the snake do? Yes, they they mad. They still holding that venom. If you go back and touch them, they will bite you. They will bite you. God is going to cut off the head. He's not going to kill his church. You see, they love using that quote where Ellen White says, oh, the church would appear to fall, but it won't fall. They love using that quote to uphold the general conference. But the general conference is not the church. No. Yes, the general conference is a governing body that was set up within the church to handle the affairs of the church. But the general conference is not the church. And it's easy to find a new treasurer. It's easy to find a new president. God doesn't need that. Amen. Judas. Judas was the treasurer. God found a new one. It's easy to find those things. God, God, God don't need you as a treasurer. He don't need you to be religious liberty leader. He'll find another one. So the GC is not the church. They're just a governing body that was set up to run the affairs of the church. And it's easy for God to change that. Yes, the church is, is the same thing. Yes, the Constitution is, a, is America is set up the same way. All right? That's why God is setting up a church and a nation at the end of the world. Because he's, 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 he's dealing with both. All right? Go ahead, Rashad. It's a revolutionary idea. It's kind of crossing the Rubicon from many administrators' perspective. But All right. So right here, he says it's a what kind of idea? A revolution. We're about to have a revolution in America and in the church, right? And then he says, it's kind of crossing the Rubicon. Let us read this quote under crossing the Rubicon. Listen to what it says. This is our pioneers. This is from Great Empires of um, Prophecy or something like that, right? Caesar sent orders to Gaul beyond the Alps for two legions to follow him, and he set out towards Rome with one legion, 5,000 men, that, that was with him. About 20 miles from Ravenna, a little stream called the what? The Rubicon formed part of the boundary between the territory of what? Rome proper and the provinces which had been assigned to Caesar. To cross this boundary with an armed force was to do what? And the Christ is about to give us Christ is about to give us permission to go to war. Crossing the Rubicon is cr yes. Crossing the Rubicon is declaring war. Dr. Vine declared war. That's what happened. No, nobody crossed the Rubicon, so to speak. But he's what he's saying is declaring war. And brethren, we crossed the Rubicon a long time ago. We crossed the Rubicon a long time ago. And Satan is not happy with us because it's the dragon that makes war. Keep that in mind. Satan don't need the Sunday law to be a dragon. America needs the Sunday law to be a dragon. Satan is always a dragon. So the dragon has been making war for a long time. And he's making war with us. The Sunday law is only to teach men what Satan has been doing for 6,000 years. What they see in America is what Satan has been doing for 6,000 years, making war with anyone who keeps the commandments of God and has the faith of Jesus. 
America is only to teach men we've come to the culmination of this war. We've come to the end of this battle. We're really at the end of the world. Amen. And I love the way the Lord showed that this week. The Bible, Ellen White says the last scenes. The what scenes? Last, last scenes plainly revealed is what? The working the of the... Of the what book do we have that opens up the last scenes of the working of the man of sin? No, no. Nah, nah. In our time. Time of the End magazine. We are at the end of the world. The moment Time of the End magazine was written is to teach us that we are at the end of the world because God has opened up to us, certain, to us at the end of the world the last scenes. Once that's open, we are at the end of the world. And we're at war. We are at war. The Sunday law is only to show how long we've been at war. It's only to culminate that war. We've been at war. We, living waters, have already crossed the Rubicon. We've already made our own conference. We've already done it. We've already withheld our tithe. We already, we already sent our tithe to where we understand it should go. We've already, Conrad Van is late, but the members need it. Right? Somebody has to wake up and say, behold, the bridegroom coming. Amen. That person has to cross the Rubicon first. And then they go to the rest of the church and say, behold, the bridegroom cometh. I saw a comment. Um, and I say, I can see why they're treating him this way. He's speaking against their holy order. Amen. Amen. It says by four men. Anybody understand what he's trying to say there? Yes, before the conference, we knew. Okay, yes. We knew that this would bring about war. Amen. So, let us go back to the notes. Richard, continue playing. And the fourth thing. But it's what we can do as members, because we were encouraged to hold our leaders to account by our current GC president when he was elected. And this is about the only way we can do it. So this may well happen if the GC supports future mandates over the consciences of members. And the fourth thing, we're not there yet is migrate to an underground house church movement led by bivocational elders and pastors. That's where we're going to be when the mark of the beast is imposed. When the mark of the beast is imposed, the conferences cannot bank because they won't receive the mark of the beast if they're, if they're faithful to scripture. That means the conferences cannot employ pastors, they cannot employ teachers, they cannot receive tithes and offerings. Therefore, the conferences when the mark of the beast is imposed are basically history. So when the mark of the beast is imposed, we will be in underground house church movements led by bivocational elders who are elders and pastors of the same things in the New Testament. But we're not there yet in time. The mark of the beast is not here yet. We are stronger as a movement and more effective in reaching unreached when we work together. So therefore, I would appeal tonight, as I've appealed before to the church leaders, so that this annual council this October... I know many of the church leaders will see this sermon. Many of you know that what happened was a profound mistake. So may the Holy Spirit give you the courage to rescind and apologize for the 2021 reaffirmation statement. It has been exposed to be a pack of lies. You took shelter in lies. Now you can stand for the truth. I want to appeal to our GC leaders to establish a fund to compensate Adventists who lost their livelihoods, like that young man in Australia who suffered catastrophic physical damage from the vaccines they were forced to take because of the reaffirmation statement. It just adds insult to injury that that which was mandated in 22 was banned by the Australian government because of those problems. It's ridiculous. It's truly ridiculous. So I want, I'd like to appeal to the GC to publicly affirm that in the future, they will defend the good conscience decisions of all Adventists vis-a-vis -vis any and all future vaccination mandates. If we do that, the whole world will hear about the Adventist church. This is what happens when our GC administrators make illegitimate decisions, overstep their defined boundaries of delegated authority, and assume the right to trample on liberty of conscience. Had that man's request for a religious exemption been honored, he would still be working today. But his life has been destroyed 
by the actions of those administrators. Personally, I probably this statement will get me into trouble. I believe that every general conference administrator who was party to that reaffirmation statement should resign immediately because they overstepped their authority with catastrophic impact on the lives of innocent Adventists worldwide. Amen. I think they should resign. They no longer have our confidence. Oh, no, the way it says, um, no, as the church leaders. Uh, that's on page 10. All right. This is the part that we read earlier, where they, they, they um, we read it in the first paper, all right? It says the SDA church places strong emphasis on health and well-being. The Advent health emphasis is based on what? Biblical, Biblical revelations and Ellen White writing. And on what? Peer. See, that's a problem. That's a problem. Why is it based on peer review anything? Why? That's what I'm saying, right? And the Bible says those that add, the plagues are added unto them. Birthing the fourth plague is the next thing to come. The Lord is about to add plagues to our church because they're adding to his word. We don't need peer review scientific literature in the way they do it. And I'm not saying we don't need to understand science because there is true science agrees with the Bible. All right? So if you had truth, you would never have agreed with those scientists that said take the vaccine. Amen. Never. All right? And brethren, Dr. Vine came under fire for this. But he's right in these statements that we just heard. He's correct. There will be a parachurch movement. In fact, there are already parachurch movements. And underground churches. And if you watch the whole sermon, he gave a whole history from like the, from like the, the 19... Hundreds, early 1900s, to how many times they had been underground churches within the Seventh-day Adventist church. It's not new. It's not new. Right? But what has the church forgotten? Is their history. That's what Ellen White says. We have nothing to fear lest we forget the past. The church forgot the past so they could make these foolish uh, decisions now. But we, praise God, we don't forget the past. Stand in the way and see and ask for thee, where is the good way? And walk therein. Amen? Now drop down to 2 Peter 2.19. This, this is the condition of the church. While they promise them liberty. Oh, you have your own freedom of conscience. You could choose to take the vaccine or not. You're free to do what you want. We're not going to support you. While they promise them liberty, the Bible says, they themselves are what? Servants of corruption. The evil servant said in his heart, My Lord delayeth his coming. And they begin to what? Smite the brethren. That's what's happening in our church right now. The evil GC leaders is saying in their heart, My Lord delayeth his coming. And anybody who comes against our holy order, we're going to smite them. That's what they're saying. And it says, They themselves are servants of corruption. Of, for of whom a man is overcome, the same is he brought into what? Bondage. Sister White says this in Country Living. Religious liberty, it will be little respected by professing Christians, for many of them have no understanding of what? Spiritual, Spiritual things. And this is where I'll close. Brethren, to have liberty, you must have the Spirit of God. Amen. When Christ came, he gave them Pentecost. Amen? Amen? That's what happened. When Christ showed himself the second time on October 22nd, 1844, he came. Amen? She says, he didn't come to the earth, but he came to the ancient of? When he came, what did he give them? Father, breathe. Right? Give us thy what? And he, he breathed upon them the Holy Ghost. And in that breath was what? Light and power, power and sweet Love, joy, and peace. Brethren, they received the Spirit on October 22nd, 1844, and therefore, they were free. However, our church has reeled us back into bondage. That's what they've done. They've taken that freedom and made it a stumbling block. 
And now men are just falling into traps, back into bondage. But brethren, God is about to free his church again. Once and for all. Because the Bible says, whom the Lord shall destroy or consume with the brightness of his coming. Once and for all, the Lord is about to free his church. Jesus says, I will sever. And the Bible says, tomorrow shall this sign be. It's right on the horizon. God is about to sever. And praise God, he's about to free us. Praise God. If we're faithful, we will be free. But we will be persecuted. And every day that passes, when we're not persecuted, we should fear. We should fear. It means that they don't see us as free. If they're not persecuting you, then they don't see you as free. They see themselves on the same level as you. And so we must go forward with these truths in plain, bold language. Crying aloud so that men may turn to the truth. Brethren, it's fearful. I know it's fearful. But where the Spirit of God is, there is liberty. Amen. Amen. Shall we close with a word of prayer? Our Father and our friend, Lord, we just want to thank you for confirming the things that you have been teaching us. We want to thank you, O oh Lord, for bringing us to this point. Lord, you've shown us recently uh, in, 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 in no uncertain terms that we need to pray for the Holy Spirit. For Lord, we learned that where the Spirit is, there is liberty. The freedom to worship you, the freedom, O oh Lord, to live a, a, a pure religion. The freedom, Lord, to preach Christ and him crucified. Cost it what it may. Be it at the peril of our own lives, O oh Lord. We desire that freedom. Lord, we do not want to be in bondage to this earth. Free in this earth, Lord. Free to go where we want. Free to eat. Free to buy and sell. But yet lost in the eyes of God. That is not what we want, Lord. We want to be free in heaven. So, Lord, let this mind be in us, which was also in Christ Jesus. For he was free. He walked this earth, O oh Lord, unspotted from the world. So help us to be unspotted from the world. Lord, help us to recognize that we need to have love one for another. We need to have love for the truth. Most of all, we need to have love for God. That we indeed may represent Christ, Lord. I pray that we may be one, even as Christ and the Father is one. Help us to rise and to live out that prayer. And Lord, our brethren who are not here with us, we pray and ask that they, they too, are having a wonderful Sabbath as we are having here a wonderful Sabbath. And we thank you. We thank you so much for these truths, Lord. I thank you. And Lord, where I fail, Lord, by my own tones and intonations and attitude and teaching, oh Lord, if, 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 if those things come across in name, I pray that you will strike it. Strike it from the minds of those listening. Help them to see the truth. And Lord, I pray for the general conference leaders. Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. Please, oh Lord, turn them, Lord. I know there are men in there who sees it, oh Lord. Raise them up, Lord, as faithful watchmen, Lord, to sound the trumpet. Raise them up, O Lord, as spies, O Lord, to bring the truth to those who, who, who are suffering under these false teachings, O Lord, under this, this bondage of no religious liberty. Dear Father, I pray, I pray that you, I pray for these men. Most of all, I pray, O Lord, that you will save us, save living waters, dear Father, each and every one of us, Lord, and even those under the sound of my voice, I pray for them also. And our brethren in Jamaica, Lord, I pray for them and this conference that you have set up. Father, you're about to raise it up. You're about to sever. You're about to show where the truth is. And Lord, I pray that each one of us here may be found under the banner of the third angel's message. Here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and have the faith and keep the testimonies of Jesus Christ. And we ask these things in Jesus' precious name. Amen.